Beginning with Georgia Tech, will Florida State show the discipline necessary to be a championship-level football team? You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Seminoles. I am your host, Brian Smith. Thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. Appreciate you stopping by to talk some Knowles. Today's show is going to be all about discipline, and that is the key, not only against Georgia Tech, but for Florida State's 2024 football season. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as playoffs are winding down and the sports are not quite where we want them to be in terms of the live action. Don't worry. College football is soon to come right back to us because FanDuel is hooking up all its customers with a booster or bonus each and every day. That's right. There's something for everyone all day, every day, all summer long with FanDuel.com. Check it out to get started. Here's the crux of today's conversation. For Florida State to not only knock off Georgia Tech, but to set the precedence to be a great football team in 2024, it's about discipline. I'm going to give the stat in a moment that defines it most specifically, but overall, not just today's show, but every game leading up to that to the August 24th game, you have to be disciplined. Why do I say that? What was the one stat that kind of goes against what Mike Norvell talks about in his program all the time? Execution, discipline, fundamentals, he says it all the time. That stat would be penalties. Last season, Florida State wasn't bad at penalties. They were atrocious. That cannot happen this year. They overcame it last season. That's obvious. But to be a great football team and a great program, that's something that you need to get away from. For whatever reason, they struggled. Here's the deal. You come in 90th in penalty yards per game, and that's exactly where they fell. 56 plus yards per game they gave up. You are not a disciplined football team. I'm going to go through today, not as many stats, more fundamentally speaking, but this stat is one is straightforward. If you take nothing else away from this podcast, it is about discipline and it starts with penalties. Florida State gave too many teams opportunities to stick around in games. And then obviously they'd find a way to win because they went undefeated through the ACC title game, but you can't count on that every season. So the Georgia Tech game, especially with a new quarterback, DJ Uyungle is a chance for the Knowles to have redemption in that regard, set a precedent for the rest of this season. So let's dive into it. Here are my other keys all the way through this show that we're going to talk about for why Florida State will or will not win the way they should. I think this is a team that should make the playoff, but if the discipline is not there, and that's why I'm doing this show before I really start breaking down Georgia Tech individually, players and all that, it starts at Florida State, not the opponent. Florida State must be, must, they just totally must be more disciplined than last year. And here's a couple of examples of why it matters. Georgia Tech defensively stinks. These are their stats, and I just want to throw them out there. I'm, I'm not trying to pick on their defense, but they are bad. So if you don't self-inflict wounds like a false start or having a receiver push off or something, get a 50-yard penalty, whatever it is, just against their defense alone. We don't have to talk about the whole game with special teams and the defensive effort for the Knowles. But if they play discipline just on offense, listen to the stats. I know Georgia Tech's improved a little, but listen to these. Points per game last year, Georgia Tech was one of the worst in the nation. 29 and a half points per game allowed. Rushing, they were a couple teams from the very bottom. They were 131st in the nation. They gave up a whopping 221.3 yards per game on the ground. That stinks. 215.8 yards per game passing. And to be honest, it probably would have been higher. Why wasn't it? Because teams could just run the ball. Don't make it overcomplicated. Just pound them. And then in total, 437.1 yards per game is what they gave up overall between passing and rushing. So if Florida State's offense, let's just start with that, is patient and they don't get ahead of themselves and they show the ability to deliver play after play, Florida State's probably going to roll over them by middle of the third quarter, late third quarter. That's the history of college football. It starts with discipline. So that's my intro and the biggest theme from this. But again, that that's throughout. Next up, and this is 
this is more specific to the players and how you show discipline, not just with penalties. It happened too many times last year. And let me provide you with the game against Boston College as the prime example. Everybody that knew Thomas Castellanos, myself included, because I covered him in high school, knew if you're going to do a good job to slow him down, you got to keep him in the pocket. What did Florida State fail to do last year? Let the Eagles hang around. They let Thomas run around, and they didn't stay in their rush lanes, and they missed tackles. He had a couple big runs, extended plays to throw the football, and he does have a cannon. He's got a big arm, so good for him. But Florida State allows some of those. That's another form of discipline that I'm concerned about. Florida State had over 40 sacks last year, could get after the quarterback, but sometimes they would get out of their rush lanes. Against Haynes King, he had over 700 yards, I believe, last year rushing, top in my head. If you get outside of your rush lanes, you will not only struggle, but you will suffer the consequences. You cannot have in any way, shape, or form any consistent pattern. He's going to get out a couple of times, but there can't be consistency where he gets a chance to scoot outside the pocket or dive up underneath the defensive end, then scoot out. They practice these things at every school in the country now, even high school and junior high level. If you give him an extra lane, he's got a pretty good arm. He led the league in touchdown passes last year with 29. He can spin it. However, he will throw it up for grabs too. Absolutely. Haynes King had 16 picks last year, also leading the Atlantic Coast Conference. Not the stat you want to be number one in by any stretch of the imagination. Finally, with, with Haynes, I think you can frustrate him a little bit. He knows their defense is not that great. Again, I think they'll be better this year. They've improved. Brent Key's a good coach and all that. But they don't have the same personnel Florida State does by any stretch of the imagination. So how much discipline will Haynes King have? How much will their offense have if you consistently don't allow a big play, if you don't give them a penalty, et cetera? That will be key for Florida State. Florida State has a defense that wins with a lot of big plays, but they lost – some discipline moments last year, too. They gave up too many big passing plays and too many big running plays, too. If they can avoid that against Georgia Tech, it's going to be hard for the Jackets. They rely on big hits, meaning whether running or passing. I'll talk about the running back in a minute. They got guys that can really play. The offensive skill talent is not a problem for them. So do not allow them easy additional yards, penalties first, and just run gap fits and then turning guys loose in the secondary. I know it sounds easy coming for me and they have to execute it. But if you give those guys an extra first down on any drive, Georgia Tech is absolutely a threat to score. Next, let's talk about what, what I think of it in terms of their offense to that. They averaged 31 points a game last year. That's pretty good. Just to piggyback off what I said, make them earn the field. If Jamal runs for 100 yards, I honestly don't care. He can't have a 75-yarder in that. Can't have a, a bunch of, even worse, a bunch of 8- to 12-yard runs that just chew up the clock and keep DJ and the offense all on the sidelines for the Knowles. They have to make Georgia Tech be a big play opportunity kind of situation where not necessarily executed, but they need to make them think, we got to take shots, we have to take chances, because we can't run the ball and throw the short passing game and be successful. Florida State does a pretty good job of eating up a lot of the short stuff. They're aggressive on defense, got a really good secondary coach. They can play up, they can play off, they can do all kinds of things. But if you don't make Georgia Tech earn the field and you get Haynes King an opportunity to get in a rhythm where he hits a couple seam balls, maybe throws a post and you're a little bit tardy, and get into your position as the free safety, whoever it is on a given play. Then you open up a can of worms and they think, okay, we really do have a shot against Florida State here. So early game discipline, making them go the field 10, 11, 12, 13 play drives. If they can do that, you know what, you tip your cap. You can't put yourself in a position to fail because, quite honestly, you weren't ready mentally to get it done. Make Georgia Tech beat you, be disciplined in that regard. We're going to talk a little bit more about Florida State's offense coming up here in a minute, including uh, maybe the one that everybody wants to talk about the most. How well will DJ in the offense throw the football around? With their discipline, I honestly think this could be a big day for Georgia Tech's defense to get smoked 
That's next here on Locked On Seminoles. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices that you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supplied, eBay's guaranteed fit, available only to U.S. customers. I'd also like to give you a thanks for coming in to see us here at Locked on Seminoles each and every day. And also give a shout out to my guy, Spencer McLaughlin at Locked on College Football. They're doing a great job on that podcast. I was actually watching some of it this morning. They were talking about a little bit of a controversy going on with uh, one Mr. Deion Sanders that's taking place right now at the University of Colorado. But Spencer does a great job, whether it's talking about Deion, talking about Florida State. I come on the podcast, whether we're talking about teams making the playoff. NIL, definitely a lot of conference expansion. That's why Florida State's on the pod quite a bit. It's a lot of fun. I also think that he just does a good job in general. He's, he's a pretty fun guy. So make sure you check out Locked On College Football after you check out Locked On Seminoles. As for the discipline factor that we've been talking about today, the discipline for Florida State is twofold with the big passing game. Number one, you got to run the football. Florida State hasn't experienced a lot. They've even got guys coming off the bench that would start for the vast majority of teams in college football up front. That's the great news. Run the ball. But we all know, whether it's Georgia Tech, whether it's a game later in the season like Miami or another, eventually you have to be able to hit strikes down the field. Florida State doesn't lack for size or speed at receiver. That's not a question. Jalen Brown, Kentron, Ja'Kai, all these guys, they can run. They have some size. They have some guys that are really shifty. You've got to figure it out. It's still about chemistry and discipline. If you run the ball early, and again, as a reminder, it is 221.3 yards per game. Georgia Tech gave up last year on the ground. Horrific. They were the worst team in the Power Five. Garbage. They're going to be better, but you should, like, conservatively, you think we're going to get a buck 50 today on the ground. That's a conservative number. Unless they just completely sell out to the run. If they do... We'll have that discussion after the game. I don't think they will because Florida State has a lot of speed at receiver, but I could be proven wrong. If you establish the run early, you're going to get some chances, probably even towards the end of the first quarter, not early second quarter, you're going to get one-on-ones. I've seen Jalen Brown run. That is one of the fastest guys I've ever covered in high school. I know Hakeem can go. I know Jakai can go. Somebody has to hit an over-the-top, scare-you touchdown play. It's still discipline that gets you there. If you run the ball well, if you carry out your fakes, all the little things that you're supposed to do, all the eye candy, setting up the run game, that eye candy and the discipline will set up your passing attack too. Not just the screen game and whatnot. I'm talking about down the field. No doubt about it, we're throwing the football. They may also, if Georgia Tech plays it well, give them credit. It's possible. They give out scholarships too. If you have a shot play called, it is just as important, maybe even more important, for DJ to pull off of that, throw it away, take the sack, run, do something. Just don't throw up a pass. To be honest, that's what Haynes King did too often last year for Georgia Tech, and it cost him. Georgia Tech wasn't a good offense last year because they turned it over, and they still scored 31. But again, I know they threw the ball around a little more than they probably wanted to because they had to score, but they, they still took too many chances. DJ is not in that situation. The Florida State secondary he's working with, completely different. They have guys at all three levels that will go to NFL training camps, several of which will go in the first three to four rounds of the NFL draft when their time comes. Be patient. If it's not there, I know he wants to impress. DJ and the offense in general must be willing to throw it away, 
come back, live to play another down, et cetera. Don't turn it over. Georgia Tech is more likely to implode. As a little side piece here, they don't have as much depth as Florida State either. There's a pretty good chance you're going to catch somebody in their secondary that's a backup player or something getting on one of Florida State's key receivers. Maybe it's even Kyle Morlock down the middle on a seam route. Don't be surprised. He's really talented. He could be a guy that catches 35 to 50 balls this year. Would not surprise me. I don't care who it is. When the shot is there, you got to connect. But if it is not, move on to hit another down because you'll still win the game. Just don't turn it over against Georgia Tech's, quite honestly, lackluster defense. Next up, defensively, if you're going to give Georgia Tech a chance, you're probably going to do it by allowing them to run the ball. I mentioned this the other day on Locked on Seminoles. Florida State, for all its talent last year on defense, and this year too, Jared Verse, Fisk, all the guys they had up front, and many of them are back, they would still have mental lapses, lack of discipline, that cause problems. Teams would hit, hit chunk yardage plays. Two yards, one yard, doing great, and then they'll hit a 20-yarder. Run gap fits weren't disciplined. Tackling wasn't disciplined. Mental errors on just where to be positioned in general before you can even call it a run gap, like two guys going to one gap. There would be a mental error somewhere, whether it was a secondary member or whatever. More consistency should be expected. Fuller and his defensive staff have been there. It's partially on them, too, not just a player thing. They have to be better. And to be clear, Jamal Haynes is a really good running back for Georgia Tech. We already know Haynes King can throw it. He had 29 touchdown passes last year. He's a good passer. They got speed at receiver. But if you give them a two-way go, meaning they're getting four-plus yards per carry on first down, their defense – won't have to do as much because the offense will keep them off the field and putting points on the board. By the way, Haynes King, again, very good runner. So that is a part of the run gap fit scheme for Florida State's defense. Haynes King will take those shots, though, on second and five. He's not afraid to sling it. He is a quantified, no doubt about, proven gunslinger, meaning he'll try to fit it in a tight window. It still might bite him on second and five. That doesn't mean you can't throw a dumb pass, but you don't want to give him as many two-way goes where you can run or pass on second down. All levels of football, especially truly competitive, that's the key to winning, putting yourself in advantageous situations. If Florida State lets Jamal get going, look out. The last six games of the 2023 seasons, 23 season, he was 80 or plus yards. He even had a good game against Georgia's defense. I think it's pretty safe to say that you're looking at one of the better running backs, not only in the ACC, but college football. I need to see it against Florida State because, let's be honest, there's a difference when you're gearing up for a game against a player like him and you've got the whole offseason. But one miss run gap fit or he runs over one guy, he's about 220 pounds or something like that, if I remember. I can't, I could be wrong. I, May him mixed up with somebody, but he's a strong kid. He will break tackles regardless. Power is there. And the bottom line is it's still the same. It doesn't matter how big a guy is if you don't even have your gap covered. The last five plays, you might have been good, but if you give him a 60-yarder to the house, change the scoreboard, the momentum changes. Hey, guys, we're in this. We got a chance. You're in the middle of third quarter. It's a seven-point or ten-point game. You never know. If you do not give Georgia Tech a chance, they're going to turn it over. They're proven to do it. And they're also on defense. As they get wore out, you get into their depth. They're going to lose discipline. And they're going to lose the battle against Florida State's offensive line in their front. Florida State should be able to run for 150, I think, very conservatively. If they ran for 300, I would not be shocked. Again, they got to prove something. They were awful on defense last year. All these things culminate. If you slow down Georgia Tech early and play disciplined defense and put their offense in bad spots, they'll turn it over. You can flip that scoreboard and then Florida State's pass rush. I believe it was 46 sacks last year. They got a lot of guys, man. Uh, Marvin Jones, all these guys that transferred in, all the speed they have in the secondary, the different blitz packages that the Fuller comes up. They will eat Georgia Tech's lunch. But if you give them a little chance and you lack discipline, 
that's not likely to happen. So when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the overall thought process in why Florida State needs to do certain things to stay disciplined between now and the end of the practices. Again, it's August 24th is the game. But again, discipline here is the key. Florida State is very close to beginning the season. I'm, I'm excited about it. I think you are too. So let's talk about it again here on Locked On Simmons. I love sports. I love them so much. I do not want them to stop. But as some of the games have been winding down and there's just been Major League Baseball here the last few weeks, that's great. It's still not as much action now that the NBA is over. There wasn't any football. But FanDuel has let everybody have an opportunity to keep the sports going whenever you want. All you have to do is open up the app and dream up a bet at any time somebody is in the mood. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all its customers with a booster bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. If you were to ask yourself, besides the obvious turnovers and penalties, that's the easy answers. What's the biggest factor for you? with Florida State being disciplined against Georgia Tech. I've mentioned some pretty key parts to this today. But what's the biggest thing for you? One of them that I probably fail to talk about even remotely enough, and it is a major factor in football at all levels, special teams. Mastromano, by the way, USA Today just named him a first-team preseason All-American at punter. So tip of the cap. To that young man, he's one of the best punters in the nation in Florida State special teams in general, our top 10 from last year. The return game has plenty of guys. Like I'm curious to see if they put Danzy, the freshman running back out of Florida High in Tallahassee, back there. That guy can fly. I believe it was 45, 99 he ran the 400 in. He can absolutely go. But Florida State has another chance here to beat Georgia Tech and set the team up for success long term. By being disciplined on special teams. It obviously starts with penalties and turnovers. I'll have to say that again. But they have a chance to block a punt, return a kick, or do something that sets them up for a big game. Maybe even break the game open. I don't think Georgia Tech has anywhere near the same speed overall as a unit. Now, again, they got some guys special on, on offense that I think could really, really run because I've, I've watched them more than the D. The D for Georgia Tech is hard to watch. But if they can get a big play, it doesn't have to be a touchdown, to be honest. Again, early in the game, you play discipline, you see something, you call the punt block. This is an example. You can flip the scoreboard real fast. I don't think Georgia Tech would be, be ready for that. Um, that also leads to my, my final point. If you block a punt and or get a bomb from DJ, maybe it's the feely runs out and hits a 78-yard run for a touchdown, whatever it is. You're playing disciplined football. You're going to make them panic a little bit because it will be like, oh, no, here we go again. They will not be as disciplined, talking about the Yellow Jackets. And then Florida State is in an advantage because, again, all the pass rushers, the offensive line gets to lean on them a little bit. Florida State's O-line should be really good this year. And then finally, I just think, I'm not trying to be mean, but I think they'll start taking some chances early in the game. You could blow them out if you're disciplined early, and you can add a punt block or an easy touchdown, hopefully both, because I think they will kind of turn on themselves. At some point last year, I'm sure some of the offensive players for Georgia Tech, I know I would have done this, like, man, we're scoring over 30 a game and we're still losing. That's got to be frustrating. There were some games last year. The offense played pretty good for Georgia Tech, and they still came up with the big L. Their defense was atrocious. Get them to be a little bit less disciplined, a little finger pointing, even if it's not obvious, because you're doing a good thing on offense, putting some points on the board. Make their offense, talking about Georgia Tech, stress a little bit. Because if you do that and you make them go those long drives and you don't give them penalties – it would not shock me if the final score was something like 41 to 20, 41 17. 
conversely, if you do commit some of those dumb penalties or don't have a key special teams player, or it even goes the other way for Georgia Tech and they have one, this will, could be a barn burner that goes down 28-24 with four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. One of the other teams being in the lead. First games are notorious for stuff like that. For some unit on a team – it's just abysmal. Special teams are often that because a lot of coaches don't honestly focus on it enough in practice. I don't think Florida State's one of them. But you cannot give them an opportunity to fail by not practicing all these little things. And I know Florida State does. Now they got to execute it. Special teams in particular. I think it's going to be important. So early scoring with that. Make them drive the field. Don't give them penalties is kind of the summary of it. But I think Florida State will dominate. I really do. I really think they will dominate the discipline game because what I mentioned at the start the show, the 90th in the country, I, I'm sure that Mike has that on a sheet somewhere at his desk. He may even have it somewhere in his house in Tallahassee. This is not acceptable. We have to be better than this. We have to rise up and find a way to be more disciplined with penalties. That alone will probably help them beat Georgia Tech because if they have four or fewer penalties, do you really think Georgia Tech's got enough talent, especially on defense, to beat the Florida State Seminoles? The Florida State football team, to me, is definitely better. So you're going to have to be disciplined and make it happen, but otherwise I, I really just don't see any way that Florida State is going to lose to Georgia Tech. The more I dig into it. Uh, when I first started looking at the numbers a couple of months ago, and I did a show about Haynes King, I was a little more concerned than I am now. And I actually have more respect for Florida State now in a couple of ways that I was a little concerned, but it's just the overall depth. Like, it's not just one thing. Overall, there's no area I go, Florida State should be bad at this spot. That's first. But I just don't think Georgia Tech's added as much talent and that's why the discipline thing has been the theme for today. The Knowles shouldn't lose to a team like this. And even if it's the first game and you're going to have some more mental errors, I get it. You're not going to have the same chemistry. This is what Mike Norvell, he put his pension on this, talking about it with the media. They mic him up at practice and Florida State Athletics do things. It's the discipline. There's no reason to think they won't be at the top of their game in that regard. This is what you're going to set your program on. Last year it came up short of that regard. You still won. Well, now you know what you still need to work on. It. They have it. They've been talking about it all summer. Maybe not publicly, but that's something they've been talking about. So with that, thank you very much once again for making Locked On Seminoles your first listen each and every day. Make sure to check out Spencer McLaughlin and Locked On College Football. It's a great show. There's a lot of opportunities out there. My buddy Alex Dano and uh, Kent, they, they do a great job on Locked On ACC too. There's a lot of things to check out, and I'm quite sure we're probably going to be hearing some more about the Grant of Rights here pretty soon on both of those shows and probably this one as well. So make sure you keep everybody on your list of to-do for the podcast, and everybody have a good one. Come back and see us again tomorrow on Locked on Simples.